Hey everyone, my name is Jake and today we are going to be looking at some I Don't Work Here Lady stories, so sit back, relax and enjoy. I'm not a waiter, I'm a cop. This is not the typical story that normally ends up here, mainly because unfortunately I was the lady in this story and it had a light-hearted ending, but I figured I would share it because of how funny and embarrassing it was. I currently work as a head waitress at a popular banquet facility that can hold up to 2,000 people. Unfortunately, as parties that size only usually happen a few times a year, the venue doesn't employ enough staff to fit that number. Instead, it hires out from a temp agency and we have workers that come in and help us serve the big parties. On those nights, I would have to train sometimes up to 15 new people on the spot to work that night. This was one of those occasions. The party we were serving was for a local police force a few counties over. Of course, that meant most of those attending were officers in regular dress clothes. The employee uniform for the venue included of a black dress shirt, black dress pants and a gold tie. The temp employees had the exact same uniform with one difference. They had black ties. This would be the reason for all the confusion. Part of the food service includes family style soup, which means a large pot of soup with a ladle is placed on each table and the guests help themselves. We then replace them when they get empty. Now, replacing soup pots is a two-person job, as you need someone to hold the near-empty pot while you put the full one on the table. It's hard to explain without having a visual in front of me. Regardless, you need two people or else you have a high risk of spilling everything and getting burned. I was about to replace one of these pots when I see a gentleman wearing black dress clothes and a black tie standing next to one of my tables. Thinking he's one of my temps, and being my socially awkward, apologetically polite self, in this case would save me, I call to him. I'm sorry, could you just hold this for me for a second? He smiles widely and happily says, sure, and takes the pot. It takes me a total of three seconds to replace it with a full one, and when I turn my back to him, I take the empty pot back and begin to thank him when I realize a barely noticeable dark grey decorative pattern in his dress shirt. I go, uh-oh, and realize my mistake. Thank you. Oh, you're not one of my guys. He bursts out laughing, as does the table and several tables around us. I cover my face in embarrassment and he pulls me in for a hug and tells me not to worry about it. Once my embarrassment settles, we laugh for another minute and for the rest of the night, that table and the three in my section surrounding it would tease me via reminding me they don't work there whenever I approach their tables. All in all, I got a good tip and it was a good night. You see, I see that as perfectly fine anyway. If an employee was nice and they went up and said, oh, sorry, do you mind holding this for a second? I think any nice person is gonna do it. I'm not your employee. So this happened a while ago, but I used to work for a seasonal goods store. Basically, the inventory varies depending on the time of year, but I had to leave due to health issues. I like to shop there regularly because the prices are unbeatable and if I'm lucky, one of my previous co-workers will apply their employee discount. Sometimes if I notice it's busy, I'll straighten the shelves a bit, but like I won't be too serious with it, just adjust it so other shoppers can spot the products easier. It's a force of habit, plus I kinda do this in a lot of stores. I should also mention that the dress code for this store is pretty casual, like jeans and t-shirt kinda casual, plus an apron, red, blue or green depending on the department. So I'm wandering through the aisle trying to find some decorations for my home, when an older lady, who looked to be in her 50s, started to put random stuff in my cart. I recognized the MOD, manager on duty badge, around her neck. 
I, however, did not recognize her, so she was more than likely hired after I left. Our exchange went like this. She will be MOD, store manager will be SM, and I will be me. Um, excuse me, I'm using this card. Yeah, and you're putting things away anyway. Can't you take care of these for me? I'm sorry, I don't work here. I'm here shopping. Don't give me that excuse. I saw you tidying up the shelf. Just put these back for me. I don't have time to argue. I have a phone call with corporate in a minute. Again, I don't work here. I'm not wearing a name tag and I'm shopping. I also just like to straighten the shelf as it's looking janky because it bugs me. Really? I see you here all the time. I'm pretty sure I've seen you in the break room a few times too. Stop lying and get to work. She drops the rest of the stuff in her arms into my cart. I'm getting kind of annoyed at this point because I've already explained twice that I'm not her employee. I let out a heavy breath, gathered up all of the stuff she dropped into my car into my arms, I look her dead in the eyes and just drop the items into a nearby display bin. The MOD, her face covered in shock, how dare you, I'll write you up for that. Since I've worked there previously, I know that she technically can't file a write-up. She has to speak to a store manager to file it. Okay, great. My name is Anna. Go ahead and call the store manager to file that write-up for you. See, I knew you were an employee. Only employees know that. She radios the store manager. Listen, Linda, I'm not your employee. I used to work here, but I am not currently employed here. I'm calling BS. You're just saying that to get out of a write-up. Too late the store manager is already on his way. Okay, great. The store manager finally arrives. I smile and wave at him. He's a really cool guy, and me and him work together all the time while I did work here. Hey, store manager, can you please do me a favor and tell the manager on duty here that I no longer work here and to stop harassing me about getting to work? The store manager looks confused and looks at the manager on duty. Why are you telling her to get back to work? She doesn't work here. She's not even wearing the name or an apron. How could you confuse her for an employee? Well, I know I've seen her in the break room and she was organizing the products on the shelf. MOD, she is no longer employed with us. Her picture is hanging up in the break room because she got employee of the month four months ago, which was her last month working here. Leave her alone. But if I find out that you're harassing anyone else who is not in uniform, I will write you up. You and I both know you can't afford to have another write-up. The store manager looks at me. Have a good night, Anna. Also, sorry about the manager on duty. Use my employee discount when you check out. I'll let customer service know to use it when you check out too. Managers get 30% off everything in store, including sale items, and regular employees only get 20% off non-sale items. Thank you so much, store manager. You have a good night too. I finished my shopping and went to check out. I still shop there on an almost daily basis, and by the looks of it, manager on duty either quit or finally got that last write-up because I haven't seen her recently. Yeah, the fact that she can't afford to have another write-up just shows that there's something else going on and she's a bad employee. I just want to do my laundry. I'm doing my weekly laundry when this older guy said, hey, and waved me over. Now, I use this laundromat regularly, and there's often questions about using the machines from new people. Myself and a few other regulars are usually happy to help newbies. This new guy was in front of a brand new digital dryer that requires you to tell it how much time you want on it before putting in the money. Like, it gives you on-screen step-by-step instructions. How does this work? You tell it your temperature and how much time, then put the money... He cuts me off. 
No, I already put a dollar in. Just make it go. Um, you don't put the money in until it tells... He cuts me off again. I had to put a dollar in to make it do anything. This is stupid. It doesn't ask for money up front. He just didn't pay attention. Whatever, I was done being helpful. Me walking away because screw you, dude. Then I can't help you. How do I get my time on it? Maybe go ask an attendant. She's in the other room. Why don't you give me a dollar? Motions towards my bag of quarters. No, I don't work here. And went back to loading my own dryer. Guy gets all huffy and stomps over to the attendant. She sets him up, giving him a dollar to shut him up and walks away. He mutters, Ugh, The customer service here sucks. She helped you and paid in the dollar, so what more do you want? You could have helped me. I don't work here. I try to be nice, customer to customer, but you're being a Richard, and Richards can fend for themselves. Guy suddenly realized that I am actually a customer, couldn't come up with a good comeback and walked away. I'm currently in my car watching him chain smoke on the sidewalk. Idiot. If he'd followed the instructions, he would have been fine, but he had to prove he was smarter than the machine and failed. Also, don't be rude to people, especially people trying to help you. It's true, if you're a Richard, you need to fend for yourself. My wife is a nurse, but not here. I was knocked off my bike, unconscious, spine boarded and blue lighted into the hospital. My wife was called and drove to the hospital ASAP. At the time, she was a community matron, so arrived in A&E Rhesus area in that uniform. She found me in and out of consciousness and still spine boarded, so kept out of the way of the staff. After a few minutes, she started to look at my paperwork and ECG. She grabbed a nurse and said, He has ST elevation. Have you investigated it? Um, we thought you were doing it. Why would I be doing it? You're the specialist cardio nurse. I'm his wife. I don't work at this hospital. Oh freak look on nurse's face. At that moment, the consultant arrived, took one look at the ECG and shouted, Cardio specialist here now. I know hospitals can be like hectic at times, but that's a big thing to overlook, surely. And I don't work here lady with a life lesson mixed in. Went to the store to pick up pizza stuffs and came out with a life lesson. I was looking for olives and was meandering up and down the canned vegetable and beans aisle, getting more and more annoyed, not finding any olives. While muttering and staring intently at where the olive should be, an old lady turned down my aisle, and from behind me I heard a screech that had me reaching to cover my ears and hunching my shoulders. This screech was the envy of every mother that ever graced a trailer park. Donna! What up, girl? This tornado siren with legs waddled past me as my ears dripped blood and stopped with the grandmother, and then started talking in louder than normal tones, and I wondered how I looked out being in the store on Forget Your Hearing Aid Night. So I wandered up and down the aisle, still searching for olives, listening to these older ladies discussing their aches and pains, how retirement was working, and who was still working on the factory floor, when one looked at me pityingly. What are you looking for, dear? Maybe we can help. They both smiled encouragingly. Olive? Oh, the other one said. Two aisles over. Thank you. Oh, here, let's just take you. They walked me right to the olives. They were next to the jellies and jams in case you were wondering. 
These two ladies, who I thought so badly about, stopped their conversation to help a poor lost soul find olives in the supermarket. Not just stopped the conversation, but walked me to what I needed. I bought a life lesson for $15.97 tonight. The one thing I'm confused about is why the olives were next to the jams and jellies. Is that where they normally go? Wow guys, look on screen right now, you see those two videos right there? They're pretty good. I think you should click at least one of them and watch another one.